good morning and welcome to Harry. Although we were here yesterday, <laughs> but this is day two of Paris. And I think I'm going to head to Hermes Savoy. I've never seen that boutique before. I've only been to the FSH location a couple times when we were here last two Septembers ago. So I thought I would go to several. It's supposed to be an absolutely gorgeous store. Of course, I'll ask if they had any cancellations, but doubtful, but it, it never hurts to ask. So I thought I would take you there. And then I think we are going to head over to Rue Saint-Honoré. Excuse the motorcycle. And check out all of the boutiques on Rue Saint-Honoré, which is Chanel, Louis Vuitton, Bottega, Celine, Fendi. I mean, pretty much everybody is represented there. In addition to Moina, I think Goyard, lots of the, the usual suspects, and then some of the ones that I really want to check out so that I can introduce you to them. So let's see where today takes us. Okay, so I just grabbed the Starbucks, which it's an, my iced oat milk brown sugar shaking espresso, which is in a hot cup. Very strange. And then I have to say, maybe it's just because these people are here that I'm around for like some conference, but either they're slow or I'm just used to walking fast in New York. And so I find myself doing some of the same things like I do in New York, like with tourists, like just get out of my way. So I think it was just the other third from a conference. I don't think normally French people walk slowly. I think it's just, they're just out for a stroll. So with coffee in hand, I headed down to the Metro stop very close to my hotel to cross over onto the left bank, which is where the Sevres store is located. So it is located at 17 Rue de Sevres. And it originally was a pool built in 1935 in the Art Deco style by architect Lucien Begay. And in 2005, it became a historical monument. And then in 2010, Hermes took over the space and most recently reopened in September 2021 after a remodel. So as you can see, lots of beautiful bags on display. This ostrich Birkin 25 was stunning. The price in euros, 16,500, which is a fairly good price for ostrich. There was a shiny croc back there. And then as we move down, we'll see some Constance. There's an Hermes Slim Constance, and then a Mini Ruli, I believe, in Ostrich, a Constance in Shiny Croc, and then another one there. Not sure what this new style is called. Here we have the Della Cavalleria in both the regular and the new East-West design that they have. And this absolutely stunning deep purple Shiny Croc was just stunning. Here's another Birkin 25 in ostrich, Anna Kelly in an ostrich, and then a Della Cavalleria in either alligator or crocodile, not quite sure. And another ostrich Constance for 12,000, I believe 900 euro. And another beautiful one there as well. There was such a beautiful architecture. These are ash huts that have been in the store since 2010. They obviously left these when they did the 2020-2021 remodel. But as you can see, it, it really shows that it was a pool, right? With the depth of the store and that you actually go down sort of into the basement. Here is the SLG department. So there's some Kelly's to go. There's another one there in Ostrich and then some Bastias. There's a Constance wallet, another Bastia. Lots of pretty things on display. I did see somebody here at this location trying on some bags. They appear to be like actual models of bags, like, like ones you could try on. She was not getting an offer because she had like five different 
Birkins and Kelly's out in front of her, so I think she was just trying to get an idea of size. These are the made-to-order SLGs that you can do. You can actually do those through the website if you live in Europe. And then here's part of their homeware selection. I loved all the colorful blankets and things. And here we are looking at some spectacular fine jewelry, this diamond encrusted watch was you know only 138,000 euro and then here is a bracelet to match in case you wanted to really stack and that's only 152,000 euro so then i moved on to some more reasonable priced sterling silver jewelry i have a couple pieces of their sterling silver and i just think it is beautiful and very very well priced in my opinion there's a beautiful cuff here's some more bracelets and a ring just some really pretty pieces. If you're looking to get something from the brand that's not gonna break the bank, I would highly suggest or recommend some sterling silver jewelry. Then here's some more houseware, homeware items. As you can see, more blankets, some plates, serving pieces, etc. I love how they display these actually within the hut. And then here you are kind of looking up at the ceiling through the hut. Then I moved on to the ready-to-wear section. Most Hermes stores have their ready-to-wear broken up by color, so you can see the same thing is done here as well. And then this is the main floor when you first walk in. You've got the beauty selection over to the left as you walk in. There's like a bookstore over to the left as well. And then I thought I would just kind of come over to the balcony so you could get a nice perspective of sort of the overall layout of the store. There's a little coffee cafe in the back there and then here we are out on the street looking at some beautiful architecture okay well not shockingly that was a no-go at Hermes but I got some good footage for you all some great bag eye candy hope you enjoyed that so since I'm over here I'm gonna go to the Bon Marche which is like just down the street here like a block or so um, so but yeah it's a beautiful day sun is shining it's actually pretty warm I'm guessing it's probably 75 76 degrees right now but still very pleasant and oh I see Le Bon Marche right there beautiful building beautiful architecture here's a Sandro shop never been into one of those maybe I'll stop uh, let's see, I think there's a saison over near here too, so I may go hop in over there. The small also? Um, let me check. I have a small in this color. Interested in that size? Um, I'm not sure. Okay, sure. Okay. <laughs> so you can tell me both if you. Because in that letter, you will find more uh, in bigger size. Ah, in okay. Size. Yeah. The Brillant is another very popular style by Delvo and I'm trying it on here in the mini size. It does come in several different sizes. It you know, has a similar sort of trapezoidal top handle shape to a Kelly. It does also come with a crossbody strap. And then here I am trying on the Nano Cool Box, which is such an adorable bag. And in this beautiful pink color, I just couldn't help but try it on. Hungary. 
So despite Chanel having about 17 of these quote-unquote Kelly bags on display, the only one he could actually show me to try on was this one in the uh, jersey style. Not my favorite, but it was at least nice to see it in the size. And then this really pretty tweed crush was also amazing. Then I moved on to Celine because I wanted to see if they had a lizard in the Triumph. They did not, but they had this gorgeous burgundy 16 bag. This is in the small size, makes a great over the shoulder bag. And then I almost left but decided to head down to Louis Vuitton, which was both a blessing and a curse after you see all of the incredible bags that I tried on. So I tried on three mini Capucines bag, the Fuchsia Ostrich, which you saw me try on in London. This absolutely gorgeous python, but it was like a coated python, so the scale supposedly won't lift in black with this hardware that was encrusted in crystals and this gorgeous lizard in petrol. And because I couldn't make up my mind, he put them on hold for me. Going into saison. If you're looking for that sort of classic Parisian style, I would highly recommend Saison. They do have some boutiques in the United States. They have a couple here in New York that I've been to, but just some very sort of classic pieces, a lot of knitwear, denim. I loved this matching sweater and skirt outfit. And then a little glimpse of the Eiffel Tower and the Pont Neuf Bridge. So I'm outside of Plaza Athene, Athene, I don't know how to say it. I think literally all these people are waiting for like potential stars and influencers to come out. I think it's hilarious. So nice. What is this? Ferrari. Yeah. I don't know who they're all waiting for, but waiting for someone. Bonjour. All right, so I'm here to try on this puffer coat, which you already saw me try on last night. And then this is the wrap coat that they brought in for me. So let's try these on. Okay, so here is the wrap coat. I can't really tie it how I want to tie it because it's it's connected here. So doing the best I can, people. So this is it in the full length. Now I'm wondering, <laughs> Deb, love you. You have it in the shorter version. And now I'm wondering if I would like it better in the shorter version. Although this is definitely more practical for New York, as far as a length is concerned. I love it open. Okay, so here it is open. I really like the way this looks open, but I'm wondering, like I said, if I should see if they have it in the short. That's what it looks like. It's got a hood on the back. Not like I would probably ever and now, hello! <laughs> Obviously a very oversized hood. It'd be like little red riding hood, but it's black. <laughs> okay, so obviously we're not going to wear the hood. Okay, so my only issue is that this seems to open more. I think I just had to, no, see? All right, now I need to play a little bit. Okay, so here is the puffer again. To be honest with you, I'd probably get a lot more wear out of this. I'll show you what it looks like buttoned up. And here's what it looks like buttoned up can take it up one more, like if it's really windy out or 
you know, want to keep the cold out even more. Yeah, we'll see. I'm kind of thinking, unless I love the shorter version, I think this is going to be it. Okay, so here it is in the shorter version. I feel like it's smaller for some reason. You might see if he has it in a size up. It's the same size as the long one, but I just feel like it fits smaller. I don't know. I don't think I'd love it, but maybe if it was in a different size, I would love it. I don't know, but he's also bringing me another one. This is the belt, by the way. Um, he's bringing me another one that's actually a tiny bit longer than this, but not as long as that. <laughs> so we'll see. But I think that one's in navy, but which would be fine too. And it's a bigger monogram. It's like the oversized monogram versus obviously this is just the little bitty. So I was still on the mini capucines hunt. Of course, the ostrich navy one had sold from the night before. This one was a lizard, or excuse me, a python black and sort of navy blue combination. And then this was a beautiful green in the you know traditional calf skin in an emerald color with the mother of pearl inlay. It was beautiful. I was having a really hard time capturing the true color though, but it was a gorgeous emerald. And then how could I forget who I met for dinner? I met with the amazing Dale from Dale's Addiction and of course Meredith from Living Lux with Meredith. So I realized when editing this video that I forgot to do an outro. So let's do that now and kind of recap the day. I thought that was kind of fun to do the other day when I did that as well. So I started out, as you saw, going to the Sevres store for Hermes and beautiful store. So glad that I was able to make it in. Unfortunately, I never did make it over to the George Sonk store. So I will have to go back again so I can complete the trifecta of Hermes boutiques. But it was gorgeous. Like I said, very glad I made it over there. Saw some beautiful bags, some beautiful jewelry. Of course, they didn't have any cancellations. So no appointment for me there. Unfortunately, I then walked over to Le Bon Marche, which was Oh, like I said, a blessing and a, and a curse <laughs> all at the same time. So started out by going into Delvaux where I got to try on all of those different bags. That was definitely one of the stops I wanted to make. Albeit I had planned on doing it at the actual flagship store, but because it was there, I just thought I would take advantage of it. Then I moved on to Celine and tried on some bags there that lizard 16 bag in the kind of burgundy color was just beautiful. I really thought about that one and I'm still actually kind of thinking about that one. So we'll, we'll see what happens with that. And then, like I said, I was about to leave and head over to Cezanne, which I then still made it over to. But as I was about to walk out of the department store, I turned to my right and I was like, oh, you know, Louis Vuitton is right there. Like, let's just go see what they have. Oh my, like I said, blessing and a curse all in, in one thing. So I met an incredible SA. His name was Nihat, I think is how you pronounce it. Really, really nice gentleman, really knew his things. And they had some beautiful mini capucines. I saw actually the petrol mini capucine in the window. And so that's what kind of drew me in to the boutique to begin with. So he had that one. He also had that gorgeous fuchsia or hot pink ostrich version that I tried on in London. So I got to try on that again. And then he had this spectacular python in black, but it had like a coating over it. So I know a lot of people worry, and I would too, about python and the fact that supposedly the scales can start lifting. Well, this, like I said, seemed to have sort of like this shiny coating on it. It almost sort of gave the effect sort of like shiny crock does. It had like, almost like I said, this sort of lacquered layer over it or something. And so you really couldn't feel the scales like you can on a regular python bag. So I was very intrigued by that. It came actually with that additional chain strap. It's a beautiful chain, a great addition, especially for that bag, because it can certainly be dressy. 
And then it had, you know, the traditional crossbody leather strap that went with it. And then the LV on the front was encrusted in crystals. It was just beautiful. And while it sounds like it would be a really dressy bag, from far away, you can't really tell that the LV has those crystals on it. You have to get up pretty close. So from far away, it just really looks like a black, you know, mini capucine. So when I was wearing it and you saw what I was wearing that day, I was very casually dressed, just, you know, in a pair of black sort of, you know, slim pants with a black linen blazer on, just very casual with running, you know, sneakers on. And I thought it looked great with that. I actually ran into another American who was shopping and she was voting. I, I was trying to get different people's opinions. I also sent a group message to the whole, as we call it, the London Connection on Instagram to get all of their feedback and their opinions on it. And yeah, and I just, I couldn't decide. So he was very kind and put, I told him I actually didn't need him to hold the pink ostrich. I just felt like that might conflict with something else in my collection. So he put that one away, but he was very kind and offered to hold both the petrol lizard and the black python for me overnight. So because I had also ordered something else that they didn't, they had one, but it was the display and I asked if he had another one and he didn't. So he was going to order that in for me. So I was going to have to go back the next day or the day after to pick that up. And so he was like, oh, I'll just put them on hold for you. No big deal. So that was awesome. Very, very lucky that he was willing to do that. Then I scooted over after a very quick stop in Cezanne back over to the Louis Vuitton Avenue Montaigne store because they had let me know that the couple or there was an item that two items that they had brought in for me one of them an SLG one of them the coat and so you saw me try on the longer wrap coat I really did like it and I'm now sort of like in hindsight looking back at the footage and thinking maybe I should have gotten that I don't know spoiler alert obviously I didn't get it <laughs> but yeah it really it looks nice in my opinion let me know in the comments below what you think but yeah, so I tried that on. I obviously tried on the puffer one again, and then the short version, which is the one that Debit Wild Unfiltered has of the wrap coat. And as I mentioned, it just, they were both, I think a 40, either a 40 or a 42, I can't remember. And it just felt a little more constricting than the long version did. And I don't know why they're the exact same coat and they you know, should have the exact same cut, except for really the length, but it just felt a little bit tighter in the shoulders. And unfortunately they didn't have the next size up for me to try. I don't even think he ended up bringing that coat that I referred to that was sort of like an in-between length. I don't think they had it. I waited for a while in the dressing room and never brought it to me. So anyway, I ended up making a couple of purchases at that location, which you probably will have seen me post about on my Instagram stories. So make sure that you're following me over on Instagram for more sort of in the moment updates. But unboxings certainly to come. And then after that, I rushed home so I could change very quickly because I had a dinner date with Dale and Meredith. So as you know, we were in Paris at the same time. They obviously had, you know, a lot of things planned and things that they were doing together. I was a very last minute <laughs> decision to go on this trip. And so I, you know, I just said to them, hey, if you can fit me in at all, I would love to hang out with you guys. But, you know, totally understood if they were already scheduled and, and busy. So they were able to get together for dinner, which I was very much appreciative of. And we had a lovely dinner at a restaurant that a very good friend of mine who lived in Paris for a long, long time recommended for us to go to. And I think we really liked it. It was a really lovely, just very French bistro type of restaurant called Sink Mars, again, over on the left bank. So yeah, we enjoyed a lovely evening together, had quite a bit of wine, uh, enjoyed some good food and great conversation. And so yeah, by the time I got home, I just was really tired. It had been a long day of shopping. And then, like I said, a couple of glasses of wine later, it was 
kind of time for me to go to bed. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this vlog of day two in Paris. Obviously a couple more vlogs to come and of course some unboxing. So if you are not subscribed, make sure that you hit the subscribe button so you know when I upload those next videos and of course the notification bell so you get notified of that. If you like this video, if you enjoyed it, I would love it if you would give it a thumbs up. It does help the algorithm. And if you haven't had enough of me yet, I will pop another video up here for you to watch and wherever you are, I hope you are having an amazing day or evening and I will catch you in the next one. Bye guys.